When I finished the rig of Simcoe, which I showed off in the last video, I finally could start working on the combat more precisely, and I immediately added some test animations so I could adjust my code. Wait a second. A sword? And wheelie animations? Wasn't Simco supposed to be a turn-based game? Yeah, well... Before we get into the combat breakdown, let me just give you a quick recap of how I've gotten here. Initially, Simco was supposed to be a top-down 2D turn-based game, and early on, as some of you might know, I already was flipping on the original idea when I switched to 3D around a year and a half ago. And finally, when I switched to Unreal a year ago and changed the perspective from top-down to a third person, I started having a different vision for Simco, but I wasn't fully committed yet. So at the time, in between the first and the second devlog, I created a whole new concept of Simco to see if I would enjoy open combat more. And around the second devlog, I finally committed to go from turn base to open combat with weapons alongside your team instead of just letting your team fight. And here's a rundown of different types of combat that you can expect in Simco. So the first is melee combat. The player can choose between a one-handed weapon, a two-handed weapon, daggers, and other dual wielding weapons, or a two-handed light weapon. In other words, for example, a sword, two-hand sword, daggers, and a spear. You can also quick switch between the weapons when you equip them beforehand in the menu, so no extra pausing the game or pop-up menu while you are in combat. You just press the button to switch your weapon. Then there are charged attacks, which when holding the attack button, you charge up a longer range and stronger attack as well as jump attacks, which when you are in the air and attack, you perform, well, a jump attack. And here's a TLDR on how melee attacks work. I would detect a hit with a trace in between these notifies. Check the hit actor, if it's the one I want, in my case, a enemy actor. Then if true, store it in a set, do the damage calculations via a gameplay effect, and spawn in a Niagara system via a gameplay queue where the hit happened. And the TLDR sounds simple, and it kinda is. I even had recorded a two minute something explanation of the attack mechanic in detail, but scraped it because it seemed way too long. But there was a lot of stuff to consider, like state of the player, state of other abilities, state of the attack itself. So the player shouldn't be able to attack while it air or while sprinting or generally while moving and the ability itself, in this case the attack ability, also does different things depending on its own and the player state. Just to give you a little example here, the attack button does four things. If there is no weapon equipped, do nothing. If there is a weapon equipped and it's holstered, unholstered. If there is a weapon equipped and it's unholstered, attack. If there is a weapon equipped and it's unholstered, and the player held the attack button for a certain amount of time, charge the attack, then on input release, perform a charge attack, and the charge attack, as well as the base melee attack, change depending on what weapon you currently have equipped. But with all these states, weapon types, etc., it can really quickly result in complicated logic and lots of booleans to sometimes just perform very simple stuff. So what I tried was to keep it as simple as possible, and to do that, I used a mixture of enums and gameplay tags with gas, where I either check if I can execute the ability in the current state, or I block a ability from executing depending on my current state, or I cancel the ability with another ability depending on which one has priority. And there's so much more, but I'll leave it at that. And the second thing is ranged combat, to be specific, bows and arrows, which is kind of self-explanatory. You just shoot different types of arrows with different types of bows, but there will be different types of each. So there will be a long range bow, a lower range but strong bow, multi-shot bow, and either different types of arrows, like different elements, or just one type of arrow, but some bows could enchant your arrow into a ice arrow, for example, but I didn't decide on anything yet. Third is team abilities. The player has a team and each player can assemble their team out of monsters that they catch around the world. These monsters are then fighting alongside the player. Monsters themselves have basic auto attacks that they do, well, automatically, but if needed, the player can also just open the ability menu and can activate a monster ability manually. These can be direct 
or AOE, heals, shields for the player or for the whole team, or different types of damage like projectiles, melee or AOE, which could also cause negative status effects to enemies like burn, poison, stuns, etc. In addition to that, you can also have monsters with abilities that give you advantages either in battles by for example catapulting you into the air so you can enter bullet time to hit shots easier or to quickly escape or dodge some dangerous situations. You could also use some monsters and abilities to generally traverse the world faster by riding on a monster, which depending on the monster can be on terrain, water or air. And players still can deploy a glider or get a horse slash auto vehicle if they for example want to do a no monster playthrough. You will find yourself in situations where you fight multiple enemies in hordes or by fighting other duelists, which could also have their own team of monsters. So focusing on a target can come quite handy to have a much higher hit rate and you obviously can change targets by just re-triggering focus. With the same input as focus, if you have a shield equipped and you are not attacking and you have no weapon unholstered except a one-handed weapon, then you can just hold focus in combat and you will be blocking hits. Then there is combo extensions, which is part of the melee combat we just talked about. The normal starter combo is 4 hits, but the player can extend it up to 7 by just progressing through the game, and it extends for both light and heavy combos. So this leads me to some combat that I've not implemented a working solution yet, or not even started implementing them. The first that I started but not finished the implementation is heavy weapon combat. You know when in Budokai Tenkaichi you would hit your enemy with the light combo first then you finish the combo by either tapping or charging the heavy attack button or you straight mash just the heavy attack button in older Budokais yeah something like that and here I already implemented everything the input logic the combo logic but I didn't find any time to make the animations and the second thing is item utilization. Of course there will be a quick item use button to quickly consume an item during a battle, but also want to implement a throw functionality to make items more useful in combat where you could just throw, for example, a water ball at an enemy like a grenade, then activate a electro ability from a monster that then does bonus damage. But I didn't yet implement this throw functionality. The same concept though applies to everything, not just items, so your water weapon or monster abilities make more damage against a fire enemy. Then I got really sick and since the last devlog, which was around five months ago, I was sick like two of them, so GG to my immune system. And maybe if you hear it from the sound of my voice comparing to other devlogs, I am sick again. So <laughs> actually GG to my immune system. Well, while being sick the first time in August, I didn't do nothing for almost a month. But when I got sick again later in September, October-ish, I could do light work, so I implemented a simple inventory and pause menu. Here you can see your owned items that you have picked up. You can also equip your equipment, like add weapons to the weapon quick slots or drop it. By the way, does anyone know why my objects fall through the ground sometimes, even though they have all collisions enabled, etc.? Anyways, you might have also noticed that the UI doesn't look that great and that's definitely something I need to work on in the future. I just threw something together so I could code the logic. Another thing that I have added is that you can save the game now and everything in your inventory, your equipped equipment and your team is saved and loaded properly. Another thing that I initiated while sick but just finished recently was to make equipment upgradable at the blacksmith in exchange for items. It does basically what you think, makes your items better and repairs them, but I also have some other ideas that I might add like enchantment or weapon evolutions, but we'll see. Enchantments generally will be in the game, but I don't know if they should be just random when dropping equipment or also let players modify them at the blacksmith. There are monsters, duelists and obelisks. Monsters are creatures in the world that you can battle, catch or just be friends with. Well, if they are not aggro. They can be found alone or in groups. Duelists, on the other hand, are people in the world, or NPCs, that you can battle as well, which also can be alone, or they could have a team like Samko, because Samko is a duelist too. Then there are obelisks, and obelisks will stay a mystery for now, but if you have a theory what they could be, let me know. So what's special about monsters? Each monster is unique with its own level, attributes, elements, 
abilities and some even carry weapons and as a player you can catch monsters add them to your team to follow you around and help you to overcome enemies and challenges you can basically collect as many monsters as you want but you can only have four or five in your team i didn't yet decide if it will be four or five and when beating enemies your monsters gain experience can level up to become stronger and maybe when they reach a certain level something happens Programming the AI for the enemies was quite a challenge to be honest. Obviously needs still a lot of work, but I think when I redo my Monster Smash animations and VFX, it would dramatically improve the experience because this model of Degan that you see on the screen right now is literally more than a year old. But that's not a topic for today. One of the most important things to me is how the movement and mechanics feel, but there's just too many animations and blend spaces that I've made to show them all off. So I just show some on the screen while talking, but some stuff that is very basic is like leaning for common mechanics like bow pitch or combat pitches if you have smaller, bigger enemies and other similar stuff like that. For example, different kinds of animations when running for each weapon or just turning your head when close to some point of interest. Other mechanics that I've added is gliding slash flying and climbing and I also made some animations for rolling, wall jumps and sliding but I'm not sure if I'll implement all of them. Like rolling is pretty cool but not really necessary in my case. And finally some VFX for the weapon trail and slash when the player lands and maybe some others that you might have noticed as well as some sound effects that I made myself except the ambience that one I borrowed from Fortnite. What now? Well, I'm planning to make this specific area here fully playable. Imagine this to be like a tutorial area where the player can try things out, but instead of blindly doing things like it is right now, it should have a objective or multiple small objectives to teach you how to play and have a good 15 to 30 minutes of fun in total. They would also include a massive quality patch in both visual aesthetics as well as functionality and gameplay. And what else? Well, I am going to need to find help, I guess. So I will try to build a small team. I really do believe that you could build a small team of talented and high agency people, which could take you pretty far and you would build a great game as a team. But if that's not possible, then I will just keep going and at some point in the future, release some version of the game that is maybe not so ambitious. Anyways, I wish you all a happy new year. Thanks for watching and bye bye.